is what's in their pocket getting over on folks that's that's all they care about give a special shout out to y'all appreciate the love y'all keep hitting us up let us know you know how we doing and thing ladies you know you put on the set real good and he was like shit i'm gonna take this bitch to spain <laughs> <laughs> so basically what you're saying is everybody can be tim tebow <laughs> <laughs> What's up, man? What's going on, EC? How you feeling, man? Man, nothing much, man. Just, you know, a whole bunch of news about not wanting to stand and sitting down for National Anthem and, you know, people, you know, open arms about it. People jumping out windows, you know. Yeah, windows and shit. Yeah, but what's been up with you, man? Shoot, nothing, man. Just feeling, you know, pretty good. You know, brand new week. You know, I mean, just excited to to get it going, man. Yeah, man. Pretty much that. You know, during this time of the year, man. You know, we're almost like towards you know the NFL season, and yeah, you know, players are right now. They're going through like you know the guys on the fringe are going through like you know their cuts or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, I was looking on my phone today, <laughs> and you know, I get, you know, we both have Bleach Report on, because half the time you text me, you're like, hey, say, you like, you'll say something, you're like, dang, nigga, and I'll be like, what you talking about? I'm like, oh, okay, something must have happened on the Bleach Report, and I'm like, see any people that's getting cut, and I'm just like, man, Jesus Christ, <laughs> <laughs> like, these, like, big name dudes getting cut, Yeah. and there's going to be more cuts coming uh, next week when they get on the 53-man roster, but yeah, you got to kind of feel for those dudes, because... Keeping it real, man. Half those dudes don't have a backup plan. Nope. They put they put everything in to you know making an NFL team. And there's only fifty three spots, man, on these thirty two teams, man. And when you don't make it, you have a backup plan, man. That, that shit's yep. rough. Yeah. I'll never forget the time. Um, I forgot what was that dude's name that um he went to our school. He was drafted in the second round. Uh, Tyrone Calico. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were gonna say. I knew you were gonna say dude name like that. <laughs> I remember his last name. I remember his first name. Cause yeah, cause like he got drafted off potential because he can run like he ran like a four three. He was tall. Yeah. You know, say he played like what like one or two years, and then like after that he was like in the same like made, uh, marketing class I was in, and then people was looking like, hmm, could have been you. <laughs> <laughs> and then other people, you know, they would de ride him, you know, because yeah. he was a uh, NFL player, and he did, you know, sign a. I think it's not a good little uh, signing bonus that he, you know, that shit's gone now because that was a long time ago when he, you know, he got a little money. So, you know, that money probably not got smoked up or <laughs> uh, tricked off. Hey, Tyrone, if you listen, I hope, I hope the money's still there. You know what I'm saying? And I hope that shit ain't gone. But getting back to my point, man, it's kind of, you know, you can't, you know, put all your eggs in one basket, even if you think, you know, you're the most spiritually gifted person in your little town, man. You always have a backup plan. Yeah, and you know this, this man, this is about the reality about to hit a lot of these dudes like real hard in the face, man. So, you know, more power to y'all, brothers, man. Like the dudes that don't make it, don't give up on your dream. Don't ever let anybody say you can't do what you want to do. Yeah, but just make sure you know you have something planned for the for the year, or even like during the season, somebody get hurt so you can be ready. Yeah, yeah, because um, I mean, you never know. You could get that call at any time. So yeah. you know, man, just like um. With the John Kittner, like it was like a couple years ago, he was, he was he was a teacher at a school. He was teaching yeah. kids, and the Cowboys called him up. He played a couple of games and snuck it up. <laughs> and I picked him up on my fantasy. Speaking of which, I picked him up on my fantasy uh team because you know I was struggling <laughs> for a quarterback. I thought he could do something. <laughs> he effing me up, give me negative points and shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but yeah, like you definitely y'all uh, hit us up, man, on uh, on Twitter. If y'all starting y'all uh, fantasy football season coming up, man, let us know. Um, you know, hit us up and show us y'all's teams, and we'll grade them. You know what I'm saying? See how y'all doing? Because you know, you know, St. and I, you know, we pretty much, you know, we we're, I'm kind of deep into it, but you know, St. not that deep in the fantasy, but he'll play. 
It just depends. Like, if you lose it, man, you just like, man, I'm out. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, at that point, what's the point? <laughs> hey, you remember that one time, remember that one year, we was in the same fantasy league, and uh, I was doing halfway decent, and, like, you was you're like you was done, and you, like, trade me all your good players, and they were, <laughs> they were like, oh, hell no, you can't be doing this shit. <laughs> That shit was funny, man. I, 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 I forgot, man. I still didn't do good, so that shit didn't even help me. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you put him in when you needed to. Uh, yeah, but I fucked the junk up. Because you have some good players, too. Didn't you have, like, Calvin and Romo? Uh, I can't remember what I had, but it was it was a nice little it was a nice little squad. It's just, I think what happened was I kept, like, like losing out on, like, putting, the, putting in the wrong people. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, man. Yeah. That like shit is rough. Yeah, people that I didn't expect to do anything always did something. Man, yeah, dude. I mean, I don't even get me started on that jump, man. Like, you'll have, like, <laughs> you'll have, like, Adrian Peterson, and then you'll have, like, uh, LaShawn McCoy when he was, you know, when he was balling, and then yeah. you have somebody like Eddie Lacy on your bench. And, like, man, you know, the pass going, you know, they're going to throw it. They ain't really going to run it. And that week, Eddie Lacy just go off for, like, 25 points. And the whole time, the whole time you're watching the game, you look at, you look at on your ESPN Fantasy app, like, what the, like, motherfucker. I'm like, if, y'all, if this dude don't score. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that should be funny as hell, especially when you make last-minute changes. Right yes. when the game start. And then yep. right when the game start, you be like, touchdown. Uh, what's it? Touchdown, Coles Beasley. You be like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I just took that bath out. Yep. That shit happens all the time, man. That shit all, I, but I'm excited, man, because we have our draft. Uh, we have our draft coming up uh, this weekend, man. So yep. that shit, that should be fun. But like you know, like SC always does the introduction, but I do it this week, man. You know, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another fantastic week of the Blank Canvas Podcast. Yep. You know, we go up every uh, every Wednesday at six a.m. Eastern time. On Wednesdays, you know, we're a topical, you know, topical show. We talk about, you know, things that are random, things that are on our mind, things that's in the news. You can follow us on YouTube, Instagram, iTunes, Stitcher, Audio Mac, and um, also on, what what I miss? I miss anything ST? I get it all. Uh, I think you got it all, man. Uh, yeah. you know, on there, but, you know, um, for our social media is at Blank Canvas ECST. Make sure you hit us up, man. Let us know how we're doing. You know, speak about, you know, everything that's going on through the week because, you know, I'm constantly on there, you know, tweeting about what's going on as far as, you know, Tiana Taylor, you know, dancing on that that faded video from the VMA. I know all y'all not seeing that junk on, like, on loop. It was all right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, did you get a chance to see that junk, ST? Uh, I checked it out. Yeah, I was I was kind of upset that I'd wasted my time watching that junk, but... <laughs> 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 what's wrong with it dog what's wrong with it I mean well first off you know Kanye uh, giving a 20 minute monologue about nothing that kind of you know that kind of ruined it for me so classic Kanye though yeah it, it is but for you to get up there and talk for 20 minutes about nothing come on man <laughs> come on yeah you know how he is like you know man I can see I can see the music so you need to give me money <laughs> <laughs> like, like that, that, that dog, that that Ellen interview will always be on that on that dude's record. So when everybody always try to bring up anything that Kanye West says, they're like, "Hey, I can't take anything you said seriously, man." Listen yeah. to that, that Ellen discussion. Man. Yeah, man, he just it sounded like he was high, man. It sounds like he all he's just, just delusional or just. I I wouldn't be surprised. Sometimes I do think he may be on a little something. Yeah, but, on the pipe. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I don't know something, man, because. Yeah. He'd be spazzing out over like some of the, you know, the, the the dumbest things. Like, you know, it takes him ten minutes to answer, you know, a, a two uh, word question. Yeah. So. <laughs> like, yeah, so Kanye, so Kanye, man, what do you think about, you know, human rights issues, you know, in America? You know what, man? I woke up this morning and I was thinking to myself, I man, do I want an omelet or do I want <laughs> a frittata? I'm like, nigga, what what? <laughs> <laughs> Like, yeah. ask the question, man. Like, yeah, yeah. I, know you, I know you're coming from, dog. It's kind of crazy, man. He just kind of goes into, he just kind of spirals, you know, into a, another zone or something. It's just, it's just off the meters how crazy he can get. Yeah, man. Just, man, just keep making beats, man. And keep making music, dog. Because that's, you know, that's your gift. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You spread it to the world. Just don't talk about it. Just don't talk about anything that has to do with relevant on any kind of issues for anybody. 
<laughs> Keep that shit at home, dog. Uh, I, I, don't, I mean, I don't have a problem with him doing that because, you know, when he did the little um, the thing about running for president, you know, he said some poignant, he made some poignant, you know, uh, statements. So, you know, <laughs> th- th- the fact that, you know, we, you know, all need to come together and, you know, just just exist, that, uh, you know, that's it's kind of, you know, I guess needless to say, but, you know, somebody yeah. needed to say something. Yeah, you think if you if he ran in twenty twenty, <laughs> how far you think he'll get? <laughs> Even though you know we not gonna he not gonna run. Uh, I don't think he'll reach. Yeah, he won't reach the primaries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nobody take him seriously, man. He had a youth movement behind him. Yeah, because yeah. you know it's Kanye and uh, yeah. But, but I mean, I don't know. He's got followers like crazy, so. Yeah, dude, that that would be crazy. It'd be funny if you get past the primaries and he gets elected as like the uh, Democratic nominee. I'd be like, holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, can I get my um, get my, my get my my passport stamp? I got, I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get them reparations first. Hell, hell yeah! <laughs> and, and you know he still probably won't do that shit. Probably won't. Anybody would like, nah, man, we done, we done came too far. We done had two black presidents, man. We don't need no reparations. And then, as he's saying, we don't need no reparations. Like the little like red laser sniper pointer going off his forehead and goes away. He's like, Whew. I get all the reparations. Yeah, I, I get it all. Hell yeah. That shit, that shit ain't never happened to me. We should say it. Yeah. Hell yeah, man. But it is what yeah. it is. It definitely is what it is, man. But. Let's go ahead, man. Let's just get to the news. Yeah. All right, man. So, you know, everybody was talking about an issue that's been going on in the NFL with, you know, Colin Kaepernick, you know, the starting quarterback, well, you know, was the starting quarterback, you know, for the 49ers, uh, where he didn't, you know, stand during the national anthem. And you know what's the crazy thing about it is he didn't dress for the first two games. Yeah, he, and he, he did the same thing. He did the same thing. So why they didn't see it then? Well, it was the fact that he had that uniform on. Yeah, that, had a, that's that's everything. So pretty much what he said, if y'all don't know, he said, "I'm not going to stand for a flag that oppresses black and uh, people of color." And he's saying, "And police are killing people of color and getting paid leave, which is all true." And the statement came out where uh, the police department of San Francisco is saying that Colin Kaepernick needs to, uh, needs to apologize to the police. Uh, of course. Or he's also, they said that uh, 49ers need to make a statement to apologize <clears throat> to the police as well, or they won't, you know, help, you know, with security for their games, which I, which I don't think they can legally not do. No. They can't yeah. They just, they just, they're just talking shit, man. But, all right. You got to understand it is the other way around. Let's just say, let's make up a race of people. Let's just call them the, like the, the Blorgarks. All right, so it's like, let's say the Blorgarks <laughs> represented, let's say, a fairly large amount of the population. Let's say it's like whites, blacks, Blorgarks, and Chinese people. And Blorgarks represent 50% of America. And they were treated like black people are treated now. But they have a little bit more influence, a little bit more money. Which yeah. is, this this is kind of you know you know kind of really won't make any sense because if you have money and influence they won't you won't be treated like that. But yeah, let's just yeah. say for this for this case of point they they will. And so you, let's say mm, just like the number of black people that's getting killed, let's say the number of blur guards have getting killed and the record amount like let's say like 20, 20 every two months. And then like you know a prominent blur guard that's on like the Atlanta Falcons comes out and say hey I'm not standing because we out here getting killed in Maine. Yeah, you know, have the people to be like, you know what, they're right. We need to stand up for their rights, and you know, I think it'd be a lot more people standing up for them than it would be for us because we've just been shitting on for so long. Yeah, that people just don't really even care. <clears throat> and we have an issue like every time black people bring up an issue in America, we're bitching. Yeah, we're complaining, or we're, we're playing a race card. Playing a race card, we just don't work hard enough for our goals. Yeah, I was like, that's just not how it is, man. Like after a while, when somebody complains for so long, you can't be crying wolf for so long. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm gonna give you my thoughts on it. You know, I had, I basically had two perspectives. The first perspective that I had, you know, it's hard living in this country 
Mm-hmm. And when somebody does something as Colin Kaepernick did, mm-hmm. it's hard not to celebrate it. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> it's very hard not to stand up and applause when you get a W every now and then. Um, you know, just growing up in this country, seeing all the social injustices that we've, you know, been witness to. And mm-hmm. not only that, you know, not only on the history, but recent history. Like, mm-hmm. you know, this has been going on for, you know, centuries. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it, it's very hard. It's very hard not to celebrate. But I guess the black man in me, you know, he, he he's got to ask this question. If it wasn't Colin Kaepernick, who would it be? You know, <laughs> nobody. Like, yeah, exactly. So we kind of need it. We kind of need this to, to spark the conversation because, yep. as, you know, as you said earlier in other episodes, sports brings everybody together. Yep. And if it weren't for sports, like if he did this at, I don't know, at a, a piano recital, <laughs> like, who would pay attention? Nobody give a damn. Yeah. Like, man, you can take like the most hardcore racist and put him in the Super Bowl next to the like the the group of people that he hates the most. It could be like okay, it could be like a, it could be like let's say let's just for you know for just being cynical for cynical sake, let's say we put like a, a Chinese man that just hates gay people, and you know they're sitting next to each other and you know their team's about to win the Super Bowl. Yeah. Nine times out of ten, he's gonna like you know. Look over to somebody when somebody scores a touchdown, and the person right next to you, you pretty much see everybody on TV get that person a high five. Yeah. You know, because of the excitement. And, you know, you're not really thinking about your cultural differences at that time because you're together under, you know, supporting one team. Yeah. So during that time period, you know, he probably going to just, you know, shake his hand and be like, yeah, man, we did it. We did it. Then after that, he was like, okay, you know, I'm going back to who I am, you know, being a bigot. Yeah. But during that time period, it does bring people together for that little time. Yeah. And, Using sports to bring about social issues are pertinent for some because that's the only way you can bring some people to the table. And it's yeah. sad. It's that's sad to say, but that's just the truth. Like some people would, would have never even listened, nope. or even you know listened to what Colin Kaepernick had to say if he won a, a starting quarterback for the 49ers and took him to the Super Bowl. Because yeah. at one point, at one point, he was good until you know the 49ers were like dumb as shit and fired Harbaugh. But that's for another day. That was, yeah. a fucking, that was a fucking stu- stupid ass move. And watch, watch Michigan win the national championship next two, three years. They probably will. Hell yeah, man. I hope he, I hope he, <laughs> I hope he says, who got a better than us? They're like, not the yep. 49ers, uh, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody. Yeah. But yeah. My, I mean, my other perspective, of course, was, you know, that of a rational man. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the rational man in me, you know, both of you and I have, you know, family members that are, that serve in the military, yeah, you know, that are you know willingly putting their lives on the line to protect the freedoms that you and I both have. Mm-hmm. And bottom line, you have to you have to honor and respect those that you know are willing to don the you know the military garb, countryman. Like, and you know it, it's it's kind of crazy because you know when you think about the American flag. Mm-hmm. Um, the American flag and the Star Spangled Banner. We only sing one verse of the Star Spangled Banner. There's yeah. there's a, there's actually four verses of it. Yep. And the writer of the Star Spangled Banner was a slave owner. No, like who won the slave owner back in that time, dude? <laughs> so, <laughs> like, seriously, yeah. So, and the fact that they were mentioned in this, you know, in the Star Spangled Banner, it's kind of crazy because it kind of brings you to that that Confederate flag as well. Cause it's like, you know, I, I guess people are trying to make the argument that, Oh, it's not what it, it's not, it doesn't mean the same thing that it used to mean. Mm-hmm, that and, bullshit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, <laughs> so when you look at, the American, <laughs> when you look at the American flag, it's well, as a, as a black man, who's aware, mm-hmm. it's hard to look at it with good intent. It, it, yep. It's hard to put it in a perspective of, well, you know, this is my country. You know, this, you know, so many people, you know, died for us. But you also have to look at the fact that, you know, there's so many things that that is, you know, that's wrong with the American flag. Like if if you if you accept the American flag for everything that's good about it, you have mm-hmm. to accept everything that's bad about it. Yep. And, you know, the fact that 
like I said, we have people that serve in the military. Yes, you have to honor those people. I hold anyone who's willing to sacrifice their livelihood and, you know, go and fight for our freedom. I hold them in the highest regards Mm. because I would never fight for this country. Yeah. (laughs) It's just, you know, it's just one of those things that I always feel strongly about. So, and, and the thing is, you know, Colin Kaepernick, He's not the first person, you know. Um, oh. He's not the first person. I don't, you know, I don't necessarily think he'll be the last either. But it's hard to picture who would have done this if he didn't, or or what's the proper setting. I'm gonna go ahead and name. I'm gonna name all the black quarterbacks in the league right now. I want you to give me a yes or a no. You ready? Yes this'll or no. Be, this 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 will be quick. Yes or no? If they would have did what Kaepernick did, you ready? Okay. Yeah. All right. I know the answer to it too. Let's go. Cam Newton. No. RG three. Hell no. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater. Ah. Being that he's in his first contract, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who who left? Because not that many black quarterbacks. Oh yeah, Winston, James Winston. Um, I I think. I think he would put a good – maybe he, he probably put a good perspective on it, but still, he's in his first contract, so no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's do this. Let's do this. Everybody's gotten their max money. And so they pretty much like – they got they, – they're like in there – let's say they're in there – they're like 32. They've gotten at least two contracts. They're on their second contract. So would you say no to all of them still? Because I still say no to Cam. Cause Cam ain't gonna say shit. Um, yeah, I'd say no to Cam. Um, I'll say I'll say I'll say maybe to RG three. Nope, I I I'll tell you why he won't. But first off, uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 he, <laughs> and this, I know this is I know this is bad to say, but I'm gonna say it anyway. He was married to a white woman, and of course so. Yeah, it's, but okay, but his new girlfriend is borderline white, so. Oh, for real, she is. I ain't even seen her yet. Yeah, so, it's I mix, mean, light, light skin or something mixed. I I don't know what she is, but RG three is not. He's not a brother. <laughs> I can just tell hey, you that right. That's what that's what got homeboy fired off a of first take. <laughs> hey, I don't care. <laughs> no, I, I just I just state the facts. Like dude was like, yeah, RG three a cornball. Then like next <laughs> thing, it was like, where homeboy at? Like he gone. <laughs> <laughs> But um, I think uh, I don't think anybody would have said it but him, dude. Cause like, if people follow Kaepernick before this issue on his Instagram, like every time like during Black History Month, he be he'll bring up a lot of a lot of black leaders besides you know the you know the the ones under the norm like MLK and you know Martin, Malcolm X and you know Harriet you know Harriet Tubman and Rosa Parks. He'll bring up uh, like a lot of different um you know black leaders that we had back in the Civil Rights Movement. And I started seeing it, I was like, okay, this brother waking up. So, you know, him doing this didn't surprise me. Because he really admires Malcolm X. Because y'all need yeah. to go back and, like, really, like, look back at his Twitter feed, like, two, three years ago. He already been up on this tip, so this ain't nothing new. Well, the, the funny thing about it is another thing that also kind of makes us look bad is that Colin is half black. <laughs> he half black. Yeah, he's he still he's still black though. He know what's up. Yeah, that's why that's, that's why I, I ride with him, dude. That's that's what I'm saying. Like, where yeah. like where are we at? Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, why are we so afraid to you know come out from under the other's thumb? No, I'm trying to mess up that money, man. He's just trying to people just man keeping it real, man. Nobody wants to rock the boat. Whatever's handed out to us, that's all we'll accept, yeah. and, and we'll go ahead and just die. And just pray our kids don't have to go through what we went through while not changing the issue. That's it. And that's the, nothing's going to get changed if you just pretty much just tiptoe by our life, man. Tiptoe yeah. in my job. <laughs> 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 yeah, man. But that's all people want, man. People just want to, you know, just live, skate by, try to get some money, try to have a good time, and not affect social change. And then be like, man, we got treated bad. Boo! That's it, dude. <laughs> That's it. That's what all you know. People just arm armchair activists, dude. That's it. Yeah. Nobody wants to make a change. Nobody wants to you know sit up and you know help everybody out. Cause I remember I was heading home from the gym, 
and I was just sitting at an intersection. I was like, man, what am I doing to help out my black youth, man? And I need to, I need to get up, you know, and do something to help out, you know, our children, you know, yeah. so they can have, you know, so they can have a better future and they know where they come from, man. So I think I'm gonna start donating, donating my time to, you know, not a big brother program because I, I wouldn't be able to dedicate my much time, enough time to the little man for that. Yeah, but I do want to dedicate my time to like, you know, you know, like a youth center. And, you know, just help the kids out, let them know that they are valued, they're not valued at home, they are valued somewhere, and that can save a kid from, you know, committing suicide or going down the wrong path. There's one person saying that you're worth it is enough. Yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, yeah. we, We need something, man. Yeah. We definitely do, dude. But, you know, people don't, people don't want to rock the boat, man, at all. Yeah. Big ups to Colin Kaepernick, man, you know. I'm glad he also said something that really, that really, you know, you know, stuck with me too, man. He just kept it real. He was like, man, you're not gonna really hear any NFL players talking about this because you know we don't really have guaranteed money like the NBA players do. Yeah. And, and he said they don't want to mess up. You know, the only other thing that we really have is endorsement deals, and they're not gonna mess up their endorsement deals. Yeah. You know, speaking on the issue, he said, but I'm willing to you know go ahead and take on that you know take on that hit. Because he's pretty much all he's going. He's made all the money he's going to make, dude. Yeah, because he he knows he has nothing to lose. He got nothing to lose because he, he he's already made like like over sixty one million dollars, so he's straight. And you know the probability of, of him getting cut is pretty high. Yep, because he got injured and he's not the same player he used to be. Yeah, and then him talking about this issue is going to just make them yeah easier, that push yeah, that door. Just, yeah, that just made everything worse. And I'm pretty sure like I'm pretty sure all of his teammates. I'm pretty sure they're upset with him. Oh yeah, they some of them came out and uh, backed him up. Like Navarro Bowman came out, oh, backed good. him up. Then like another, um, it was like a, I forgot the defensive lineman. He came out and backed him up. But then one of the white players, like he's a prominent offensive offensive tackle on, the, uh, on their team. He been on that team, you know, when they were winning and when they were losing. <laughs> and he was like, he has the right. He has, you know, we have that right to say what we want to say, man. But you know, you know, I can't fault him for doing what he wants to do. Yeah. You no, know, but he was like, you know, but I'm a stand during the flag, you know, national anthem. But you know, it made it real. And Kaepernick was back in the day when he was like a Super Bowl player, and he was like really balling, and did this, and knowing that he's gonna be the starting quarterback, and him sitting for all 16 games, looking like, what y'all gonna do about it? And like, yeah. as I as I get these touchdowns, you gonna cheer me, or are you gonna are you, are you gonna boo me? Which one is it? As I win these games, that would have been real, dog. Like, yeah. Somebody like if Cam Newton would have did it, and that was at last year, and he like went sixteen, went uh, one like well, he went fifteen and one. Yep. Yeah, no, that would have been real. But you know, as long as people have to answer to somebody else, we're never going to get. We're going to get. We're getting more and more athletes speaking out, which is good. Yeah. It also starts in the community. It's just few and far between. It's free and far between. We need to do our part, too. We're not looking for the athletes to do everything, but what the athletes are doing now is a great step forward because this hasn't happened since the 60s, man. I respect LeBron, Dwayne Wade, Chris Paul, uh, the ladies from the Minnesota Lynx, yeah. Colin Kaepernick, everybody that stood up and said anything. You know what's crazy, though? What's that? Like, not one like non-black person has come out and said anything. Yeah, but what else can you expect, though? Yeah, the, 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 the only, anyway. The, yeah, the only thing that we can expect uh, non-black people to say is it's, it's plain criticism. But pretty much, that's that's pretty much it. There's really nothing else. It's, it's usually criticism, uh, like you know, telling us to stop complaining and things, and you know that yeah. it's like they get it and they don't care, or they don't get it and just don't want to, you know, I guess get more knowledge on it. No, I just, I just think, man, if it's not happening to you, man, the old adage, if it's not happening to you, why, why say anything? Like you see, yeah. why be bothered? Yeah, like if you see, like a, um, you know, like back in school, back in the time, back in the day, like on the schoolyard, you'll see like a little, like you see like the smallest kid on the, on the playground getting beat up, and you walk by like, hey, at least it ain't me. Yeah, you keep, it, you keep it pushing. That's how they see it, man. I think if it was the other way around, and they were oppressed, you know. For even like a day, like some of them would just lose it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man, they were like they just woke up one day and they were just like another race, and man, just oppressing the area that they're in. They can be Hispanic, they can be Chinese, they can be whatever race. So they they can still be white and just go to an area where they'll be oppressed and discriminated against. They'll they'll lose their mind. Probably so. 
Yeah, man. Just some people just know how to handle it, man. It's just it's crazy that we're we're it's crazy that we're built. We've been built and just conditioned to handle handle it. It's kind of sad. Yeah, I, I I don't know. I think maybe like I think maybe we were just just put here to be these people, you know, put here to be, you know, uh, I, I guess that mentally tough. It's crazy, man. Oh, can't worry about it, man. Let's go ahead. Nope. We, 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 can, we can talk about this shit all day. We'll spend a whole hour talking about this and be like, oh, all right, top to the topic. And it'll be like two hours in. So yeah. <laughs> let's go ahead and get to our next point of news. And I have a question. I got a question for you, ST. What's up? If there was a pill that can make you immortal, or make you live longer than the common life expectancy, would you take it? Um, Probably not, man. You know, uh, how, why so? I, uh, I get to the topic, but why so? what's your reason? Why would you want to live? Why would you want to live forever, man? You know, and never die. Never have to worry about that. Well, first off, I mean, there ain't too much on this earth that I would want to live to see anyway. Because it's going to be <laughs> a lot of crap going on here. <laughs> Uh, ST gonna ST gonna be the old guy on his deathbed and be like, "I told you, apocalypse was coming. That's on y'all." <laughs> <laughs> Boo! <laughs> peace out. Yeah, peace out. It's gonna rapture. Boo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I definitely don't want to see what you know what's in store for this earth. Uh, you know, in the future, uh, yeah, poss- possibly the near future. So, yeah, I will always like look at my uh, my little cousins when I talk to my mom, and I be like, man, I sure do hate it for them because you know they got you know no telling you know what's gonna be hell in the future for them in the next you know twenty to fifty years, and you know sometimes I be you know a little bit yeah you know, I be joking, but sometimes I be for real like man we don't know what's yeah. you know we don't know what's coming out the pipe man, but no. Nah. And MIT scientist claims that they have a pill that's found a found the youth. Which pretty much says that it can repair DNA. Also, it's a cellular disinfectant. It also gives you um, extra protein functions, which actually decreases the aging process. So he said this is going to be the miracle pill that they're working on. And they said without a prescription, the pill is going to be $60 a month wow. for the pill to stop the ages of, to stop you from aging. So pretty much it's in the beginning stages of the FDA's approval. Uh, and if the, and this if this gets approved, man, this is going to be the hot pill. This is going to be like the biggest thing since Viagra, dude. <laughs> like it's going to be some man. You know how many people that's going to be like in their like late thirties, going into their forties, is going to be gobbling these shits down. That's <laughs> probably so. and, and it's probably going to kill them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It'll take like take take like if I take it's only say recommended to take two or one pill a day. Like if I take two, it'll speed it up so I can get these you know these crow's feet off you know out of my eyes. <laughs> And in the hospital, you know, they're growing like another arm and shit because they didn't follow the rules. Yeah. Yeah, man. I couldn't see myself taking it. I couldn't see myself taking the pill either, man. I'd rather age gracefully. Yeah. And go ahead and, you know, live on this earth for the time that, you know, God's given me, man. But it's going to be some people, you know, because everybody has a fear. And some people do fear dying. And this is going to be, you know, a, a deterrent from it. But still, you know, a random act can still take you out of here. That's true. Yeah, man. It's the only thing this pill is going to do is just stop you from dying of old age. And who's to say that cancer still won't get you, like we said, because cancer, yeah. <laughs> cancer almost gets everybody. Once you get to a certain age, cancer is uh, is the reason why some people die. It's not even of um of old age; it's just natural causes. It's almost inevitable. Yeah, man. So, you know, you gotta you gotta kind of gotta face facts. I do kind of respect that the, the doctors are doing it. This yeah. would be a breakthrough. This would be a major breakthrough yeah, in science if it if it does happen, man. He should never have to work another day in his life. It'd be a pharmaceutical breakthrough as well. Hell yeah, man. It'd be the greatest pill next to, I guess, Viagra for some people. Because, you know, they, they just like, went crazy when that shit came out. Yeah. Or if they ever do get a cure for uh, for cancer or for AIDS, then I think this will still be the top pill. But I think like the other those other two pills would be like two and three. Yeah, uh, it'd yeah. be pretty high. Yeah, it'd be real high, dude. What happened if, okay, so I wanted people to approve a pill for... Uh, for HIV, if it if it cured it, but it made you sterile. Uh, no, I don't think they would do that. You don't think a lot of people would take the pill? No, I don't think the FDA would approve that. Yeah, I don't think they would approve it at all. But I don't think some people would still take it though. Well, yeah, I'm pretty sure they if they find it on the black market or something like that. 
Hell yeah. They be like, gulp that junk down. I'm like, shit. <laughs> uh, shit I ain't trying to die. They be, go out, don't learn their lesson, go out and have sex the next, the same night. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they catch a new HIV strain, HI, HIV2. Or some bullshit that just came out. Like, like you just like finished, they like, just like just finished finish having sex. And then they like looking at CNN. They be like, there's a new strain of HIV that's hitting the waves. You know, it's it's populating the, uh, a large percentage of Americans. And he just sitting up like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, people like that be like, I ain't going to happen to me. And they just like, cure, they just cure AIDS for themselves. And they going up, take another test. I'm like, um, sir, you have HIV, too. But like, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, man, I thought that was, I thought that was pretty neat, dude. I thought that, I, like, keeping it real, I thought since I already have these like these anti aging creams and you know all these other anti aging products out there, especially for women, I thought this was inevitable to happen. I just thought it would happen it would have happened by now, but it's pretty cool, man. We'll see if it works out. Only thing that I would see it would be useful for is you just like revert the size of aging. But it just not you know yeah. it doesn't make you you know. Make you younger. If it makes you look younger, let's say if you're you're fifty, and it makes you look like you're in your thirties, I think that would be cool. But yeah. as far as it, you know, making you live forever, nobody really wants to live forever because you know what about the people that are around you that can't afford it? Yeah. Whether if your body your body you know develops a tolerance to it, and you have to take two times the doses doses, and then it becomes popular, and then it goes from sixty bucks a month to like a hundred and sixty a month. Yeah, oh, 120. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The price just goes astronomical. Then he's like, "Wait a minute, man. You know, I like being young, but not this much." And then like the divorce rate to go even will go will skyrocket even more. Cause, yeah. you, <laughs> Cause you know, dudes, females, and males will be like, "Man, I still got it." Why they taking yeah. the pills? Hell yeah, as they're getting younger. And like, <laughs> man, you know, I still got. It. I'm about to go out here and slang it. And other women, are like, I'm about to go ahead, and, <laughs> go ahead, and spread it. You know. <laughs> Yeah. So, so yeah, that'll happen too, dude. Cause you remember um, when Viagra came out, there was um, a large t- statistic of uh, older people catching um, STDs and getting divorces yeah. as well. Man, that shit was hilarious, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was like, yeah, I, I love Mary for the rest of my life, and he and he flipping through like a um, a GQ magazine, he's talking about what is this? <laughs> it was like, man, I think I gotta find my ticket out of here. Mm. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I thought that was pretty cool. And then the other piece of news, which is kind of disturbing, is from a, a Chinese Jack Ripper. So, uh, yeah, man. So he was called. He was. He's known as the Chinese Jack Ripper. Jack the Ripper. Jack the Ripper. Yeah, my bad. Uh, the alleged the alleged serial killer was accused of raping and murdering eleven female victims in, in northern China for over a decade. Ah. And he was just captured, man, just a couple of weeks ago. And his name is Giao Ching Yong. And he was and he was uh detained at a grocery store. His wife runs. Um that's how he was he pretty much was caught. I'll tell you how he was caught, but he admitted to the killings that took place between nineteen eighty eight and two thousand and two. And he's fifty two years old now. He's married and has two children. Hmm. Police say Mr. Gao targeted young women dressed in red and followed them home where he would rape and kill them, but often cutting his, cutting their throat and mutilating their bodies. Dang. His youngest victim was eight years old. Oh, my God. Come on, man. Yeah, man. A kid. <coughs> A kid, dude. And he would target women that wore red? It just shows how sick people are, dude. I guess it was his favorite color. Yeah, man. It said in 2004, police uh, had said a suspect was looking for a sexual perversion, and he hates women. Wow. It said he's reclusive and unsociable, but patient. Police have posted up to a $30,000 warrant for his arrest during that time period, but he was never caught. Wow. Yeah. Say The way they say Mr. Guy was tracked down after his uncle was arrested for a minor crime, according to the News China Daily outlet, he gave a DNA sample, which police then linked to the crimes, determining that his the crimes were committed by a relative. So his uncle got him jacked up. Dang, yo. Hell yeah, dude. So he would have got away with it if his uncle wouldn't have got caught. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, everything that's dark comes to light, man. So yeah, that's true. I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad this bastard got caught, man. But I thought this yeah. was just, just crazy, man, that he had 
raped and killed 11 people and hadn't gotten caught for all that time. Man. And, and they're saying there's no reason why he just stopped killing in 2002. There's no reason why he just stopped doing it. He just he just was abrupt. But they still haven't really. They detained him, and he's like, he's confessed to his crimes. But he just trying to now they're trying to figure out what his motive was, and why he only did it from the 1988 to 2002. He probably because he thought the shit was fucked up. Yeah. Man, he should have came. He should have came clean longer. He shows how much of a coward he was. He could take people lives, but not confess to his crimes. Yeah, it's just another example of how sick people can be, man. It's, yeah. And the fact that. He's touching kids. Is that's even worse? It's even uh, worse, man. Yeah, and then mutilating, like raping them, and slitting their throats. Like, man, yeah. like what girl? I don't care what you say. If a female dished you back in the day, and y'all laid up, and she said, you know, you know, you're not satisfied her sexually, and she like told everybody or something, and spread that junk all over the all over the streets, that still don't give you reason to hate women vehemently. Yeah. Or vice or vice versa, where a guy smashes you, and then he goes around talking about she's a hoe, and then telling her, telling everybody, you know, what y'all did, and spreading around, you know, spreading around community or internet, that still shouldn't make you go to a life of just wanting to, you know, hate hate another gender so much that you want to rape and kill them and mutilate their bodies. Like, what did he do? They didn't even have in the report like what he did with the bodies to hide them. That's just crazy. He got away with that for so long. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's over like twenty you know, years almost. It's almost about to be twenty years. It's your police at work. Yeah, man. That's a lot of people to keep. That's a lot of people to keep on the tabs too, man. They had like over a billion yeah. people in China. That's still no excuse, dude. Jesus Christ, man, man. But rest in peace, those people that were that were lost back in that time, and they finally got their justice. They finally got their due yeah. justice, and you know he's gonna serve his time because I don't even know in uh, China if they had the death penalty or not. Uh, I, w- I can imagine that they don't. Yeah, being, probably don't. Being, being that they probably value um, the you know the quality of life more. Yeah. So yeah, probably that's probably is true, man. But man, that's all we have for the news, man. You got anything else to add? Uh, no, nah, man. All right, man. Let's go ahead and you know get to the topic. Yeah. So st, what you got, man? What's uh, what's been <laughs> what's the topic for the week, dog? <laughs> 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 well, you know, a lot of funny things have been happening over the past couple of days. Funny? Uh, yeah. <laughs> to say the least. Yeah. <laughs> you know, whether it be, you know, uh, Young Jock with his spiffy new haircut. <laughs> or, uh, or Young Thug with his uh, his new album cover or whatever. But... You know, today we just wanted to talk about overall, you know, how we've noticed the demasculization of men, you know, in today's world. Um, I I don't I don't know. You know, it, it just seems like more and more, you know, there are less and less men in the world uh, and less and less real men. Rather, um, you know, everybody's gay now. <laughs> Which nothing, mean, nothing, nothing wrong with that. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> but how come like like there's there's no more there's no more men that like there's no more Brock Lesnar's there's there's no more major pains you name it like think think of you know the manliest man yeah uh... like, there's, there's no more alpha males out here anymore um, I think. Lord Jamar uh, from Brand Nubian said it best. You know, the alpha male is being replaced by the beta male. You know, it's just certain things that I'm noticing that, you know, a lot of us men are doing. And, you know, it, it's just when the era of, like, our grandfathers or something like that, you wouldn't, like, you would you would see it, but it wouldn't be as openly accepted as it is now. Yeah, man. So why do you th- why do you think that is, man? Why do you think that like dudes are just you know are bitching up and you know and not being men anymore? Well, uh, the the most the most important one is the fact that we don't have anybody teaching. We don't have anybody you know showing our men how to be men anymore. We kind of said this earlier, you know, in earlier episodes, but 
I think that's the main reason. And, you know, reason number two is the fact that we don't want to learn nothing anymore. Like, we'll we'll figure out how to use Snapchat. We'll, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll do that. But we mm. won't figure it, we won't take the time out to figure out who you're supposed to be in society. You know? Yeah. Like, and I'm not putting this totally on, you know, the ladies and nothing like that, but the ladies do a poor job of mm. positioning our children towards, you know, a, a, a manly figure. We don't, you know, we don't have that example anymore. Mm-hmm. Like it, it's it's hard for us to to be men if we don't have men around us. Yeah, man, it's kind of it's kind of tough when you know, you know, just women in general have to you know raise their you know raise their kids on their own. The only thing they can teach them, you know, yeah. you know, only thing that they can teach them to be is you know pretty much you know what they see on TV. So you know, some yeah. women out there have done a great job raising their kids on their own, and the guys have come up and been strong men because of the. The boys would go outside of the home and like find like a you know like a coach, yeah, of their football team, basketball team, soccer team, or whatever, um, to be their father figure. Or you know, then we'll get to the issue that we're about to talk about is they'll go to TV yeah. and they'll see what's on TV and see how the men act on TV and they'll emulate that. So mm-hmm. they're going to emulate what they see on you know, uh, Love and Hip Hop. Yeah, you know, real why you know, real uh, whatever, real wise or whatever, or Scandinavia, whoever the fuck going on right now, <laughs> and they'll view that, and they have the time to do is on their TV. They they be on TV, they don't really be running the show. Yeah, the women the too. they lay lame, they corny, they got no skin tight jeans where they can barely put their phone in their pocket. They got to hold their phone in their hand. <laughs> yeah, uh, or like. Or the women on the show always talking about how they not shit and they about to go to jail. Talking about hold it down, folk, while I'm in jail, man. So my yeah. butt, my butt getting penetrated, man. You know, hold it down. Like, it it go, it goes back to what's being shown on TV because half of you know the children in in this nation are raised off of TV just because of the circumstances of the you know the family providing. And there's only yeah. so much that the the mother or the father can do once they get home because they're so tired they gotta get ready for the next day. So, you know, you can't put it all on the parents. You got to put some on them, but but they need help. So if it's a dual parent yeah. household, it's rare that I would, you know, it would rare that you would see. Because, like, you know, everybody we have, we're, you know, our, our whole crew, we're all good, upstanding men. And, yeah. you know, you know, and most of us were, you know, raised by just a single, you know, just by our, you know, our moms. And, you know, the dads, you know, for some of us, the dads were there. And some of us, the dads weren't there. But I think we all turned out very well. Yeah. Yeah, you know I say, you know, you know, all of us, you know, are mostly, you know, alpha males. You know, some of us are not. We're not gonna say who. Y'all like, you know <laughs> now I I, I, I buzz list of that, like who are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> if you ask yourself the question, it's you. I just went out <laughs> No, I'm just kidding, man, but um I man I think another issue is, you know, I think it started like back in like the the late nineties and early two thousands when they had it where they were just like women would always just come out and with the hot topic was, you know, why are men so misogynistic? Why are they trying to be yeah. mentally men? Why don't you show your feelings all the time? And then after a while, men was like, you know what, I'm gonna let my guard down and you know, I'm gonna go ahead and you know and do this. And yeah. then when you do it, they be like, Oh, you a punk, you this or that. And then yeah. like, you know, you can't have it both ways, man. I think it should be the like me, I'm like I'm an old school traditionalist, man. I think men should be men should provide provide for the women. I also think that the women can go out there and do what men can do, but I think men should be able to provide and yeah. take care of the family. They should be the number one provider, and then the women can also provide, but it should be joint where they both provide for the family as well. But if it comes to a point where I've had to choose one or the other, it needs to be the man taking care of the woman. Yeah. That's how that's how it should be. He need to be taking care of her. If he chose her as her queen, he need to take care of her. Make sure she has everything that she needs. If she wants to go out there and do something, you know, start her own business, start her own project, or go back to school to get something done, he should be able to pull up those funds to be like, hey, you want to go back to school, I'll take care of it. If you want to oh, further I your education. Yeah, I help you. I further your education. I'm there for you. If you want to start a business, what's your business plan? Let me help out with your business plan. If you need money to front the money, I help you front the money. Or the other way around, if the if the husband has something, if he if he took care of the family for a certain amount of time, then he hit, he hit hard time, and then you came up. 
I would expect you, the wife, being there for the man to help him up, to uplift him, so we can get the family core back together. Yeah. So it's just a 50-50 thing, but sometimes you got to let the man be the man. Yeah. Women don't want that anymore. Yeah. I I think what it is is, you know, they, I mean, like, like they want their independence, but at at the same time, they're kind of, they're kind of screwing themselves over because when we give you that independence and, you know, you act funny because, you know, we don't, we, we, we're not treated like the man that we used to be. So I don't know, man, it's, I think a lot of a lot of women allow us to get away with certain things too. Yeah. Um, <sighs> it's, it's so much stuff that women allow us to get away with. Yeah. And I don't know, man. It's it's hard to it's hard to say. It, it really is. What you think? What you think? Like uh, what you think? Like one thing that can help it like push us like push you know, beta males back in the foreground and bring alpha males back. What do you feel like some things that can like help and like start that movement again? Man, that's a good question. Um, or you think, you think it's just too far gone? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think at this point it, it's, I mean, it's not, it's not totally impossible, but yeah, it's gotten to a point where you can't be, like you get criticized for being a real man. Nobody wants to be criticized anymore. Yeah, like, man, like, that that is true, dude. Like you can't you can't come out and have a certain view about things and it be like a quote unquote manly view yeah. without somebody coming up and saying, "Hey, man, stop being a misogynistic pig." And that's insensitive. Living, that's insensitive, and you know, and then those would be the main dude. That'd be the main men that still be getting women, dude. Yeah, that'd be the main I, ones. The women be talking all that yin yang, but they'd be the main ones that they want. Yeah, it's such a dichotomy. It's it's hard to keep up. It's hard to it's, it's it's hard to live up to today's standards, man. Because you know you you want to be a manly man. You want to be accepted, but at the same time, you don't want to you don't want to rest on your principles because I, I mean that that just makes you look even weaker. So yeah, it does. Like, it's just I don't know, dude. It's it's like man, you damn if you do, you damn if you don't. Yeah, pretty much, man. Yeah, man. It's just, I, it's, I'm, this is where we are. Yeah, I hate the fact that nobody, nobody's willing to, you know, be criticized anymore. I think it'd be a resurgence. I think it'd be a resurgence of just mentally men and dudes that take care of their business and they won't care what other people think. I think that's kind of where it's, I think that's kind of where it starts. You have to get to the point where. You know, and this goes for men and women. You, you just look yourself in the look yourself in the mirror and be like, "Hey, man, I'm a I'm a stand by my belief and my views." You yeah. know, now I ain't talking about no radical shit. You know, talking about you know, I don't care for this certain group of people, and I'm gonna stand by my views and go hunt them down and kill them. Nothing like that. Yeah, and I'm just talking about I stand by you know me being a man, me believe me believing what I believe in, and me standing standing on my morals, my just and right morals, and I want to bend for them. And I'd be like, oh, yeah, you're right. I shouldn't have said this. Or, oh, that's right. I should have stepped on any toes. I'm so sorry. Let's go get a let's go get a pumpkin spice latte and talk about this and talk about our feelings. Yeah. Like, no, nah, fuck that, John. I'm going to get me a damn, uh, in my case, I don't drink. I'm going to get me that Coke Zero, you know what I'm saying, and, you know, <laughs> and go about my business. But, you know, most yeah. people like, I'm going to get this 40 or some bullshit or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah man, it's just, I just, don't, I just don't know, man. It's just... In this society now, this this social media world that we live in, you really can't be who you tr- who you want to be. You truly are without being Absolutely. judged. All right? The one the one minute that you're judged, that's it. Like if you care about it, you lose all your followers. If you care about your followers, or you'll pretty much get pestered all day on social media by somebody that got no life. And yeah. then at, to that point, you just be like, hey man, I'm about to just go ahead and just you know turn off my social media period because this is getting this is getting stupid. So I don't know, man. This is just some things that men shouldn't do, and like <laughs> two of those things are what Young Jock did to his hair, <laughs> <laughs> and what uh, uh, Young Thug wore on that album cover, dude. That's two things men shouldn't do, man. That's 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 just a no no, man. Like, <laughs> if, like if you if you consider yourself a, a straight male, you know, straight or gay, you know, if you want to be gay, that's fine, man. We're not saying you're not we're not gay bashing, but if you want, you can see yourself a straight male. 
straight males don't wear that kind of stuff or do that or, or wear that kind of haircut. Like, like I don't want him to come out and be like, hey, I got my own style. Leave me alone. I'm trying something new. Y'all living inside of a box. Like, nah, dude. Like, you so off far outside of the box, the box look like a triangle, dog. Yeah. Like, it's, yeah, it look, it look, it's looking real suspect right now. <laughs> you know, if you, if you know what I'm saying. So you need to, yeah, you need to watch it, dude. This shit ain't cool. But I, I don't know, man. It's just like I can never see myself doing anything with my hair like that. You know, I can't anyway because I'm bald. Uh, <laughs> even when I did have hair, I wouldn't did that shit. Like the most crazy thing I wanted to do with my hair was like do like twist or like get some dreads. I was trying to get some dreads, but you know, thanks to my dad, you know, you know, our jeans, <laughs> you know, I didn't see, I didn't see, I didn't see the shit coming. <laughs> <laughs> well, I kind of did when my hair didn't go past a certain point. I was like, "Oh no!" <laughs> yeah, well, I tried to grow like a mini fro, and you know you ain't got no hair when you like grow the fro as far as you can, and then like you put the pick in your hair, and the pick can't stand on its own no matter where you put it on your head. <laughs> that pick can't stand on its own, dude. But um, yeah, yeah, dude, or just like wearing a skirt. And like you said, like it's a new hot style. Like, no man. Yeah. If you're not Irish or Scottish, and you celebrating, you know, you celebrate a, 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 a Irish holiday, dude, then wearing a skirt is a no no. Yeah, it's, and you're a male. It's Scottish. So. Yes, yeah, my bad, man. You know, yeah, I'm, yeah, 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 I'm, yeah. I'm about to say, don't don't let the Ireland brothers get mad at you, cause you know. That. Yeah, yeah, they'll come like, yeah, shoot me timbers, you motherfucker. <laughs> 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 that shit would be timbers. What the fuck was that, man? <laughs> you said it. <laughs> oh, that shit. <laughs> but, but yeah, back to the you know the young jock point. To I mean to a degree, I don't really have a problem with it. I just think it's hilarious as hell. Yeah. Um, because I mean, let's face facts. You know, men have been doing that since the 40s and 50s, you know, and as, as long as we know, all of the major pimps have been, you know, advocates of the pressing curl. So, yeah, <laughs> that is true. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I mean, I can't really get mad at that. It, you know, it, it's that's what he wants to do with his hair. You know, hey, that's his hair. It, you know, if you want to walk around looking like a stud auntie, you know, that's his problem. <laughs> it's, it's, so. Yeah, if that's man. what he want to do. That's what he want to do. That's how about, man. They went in on him, dude, for, yeah. for oh, like, yeah. two, three days, dog. That shit was hilarious. <laughs> uh, that Monica one, that Monica yeah. Alcove one had me rolling. Yeah, that was hilarious. <laughs> funny, man. Uh, yeah, that shit was funny, man. But, and then, like, they had the, like, the young jock. They had him on two sides of, like, a car wash. <laughs> and, like, I had a car coming through. Like, he was part of the car wash. I had, like, a truck coming through. He was like part of like the little uh, car wash uh, <laughs> cleaner, like because a little skirt he was wearing like one of the little like uh, car wash, car wash claws that you see in a car wash. But yeah, yeah, dude, I just um, I don't understand it, man. That you could you could get to the point where you can just be you trying to be different, but you go over the edge. Yeah, and you need to have your boys there, like some real dudes there to be like, hey, man, this ain't gonna this ain't gonna kill this ain't gonna cut it. Yeah, and these are the guys that don't care about being on the payroll or not because they got their own thing going on, and they won't care if they lose money or lose a friend by just telling somebody the truth. Well, yeah, and that you know that that all goes along with you know watching who you hang around with. Yep, and I you know I just think, but I don't know, man. I, <laughs> it's it's a really 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 hard subject to talk about because. As you said, people want to do their own thing. Yep. You know, nobody wants to be criticized for, you know, what could be seen as, you know, not normal. Yeah. So, um, I think another thing, another reason why I think most guys will go out, go out of their way to do, you know, certain hairstyles or act a certain way or, you know, be different is because you, you, like, it goes back to just trying to, like, stand out and be different. Like, remember that time? Remember I said I was in Japan, man. I was like, man, everybody looks the same. It was on the train. Everybody had on a, a white button down and some slacks, yeah. and they had like a like a briefcase going to work. I was yeah. like, man, I, I was like not being racist, but when I was standing, there, I was like, man, I can see why some people are depressed here, 
and the suicide <laughs> and the suicide rate is so high just because everybody looks the same. Yeah, so I can understand why they're like on the cutting edge of fashion, or like you know you'll see them they'll dye their hair or they'll wear like wacky clothes that don't even go together. They wear like a a striped jumper, you know, some striped you know jumper pants with like a a neon not neon pink shirt. And like a book bag just to stand out because everybody looks the same. If like they make yeah. everybody like wear the same stuff, everybody's gonna have like black hair, black hair with just regular like Asian eyes, dude. Yeah, you look like just Japanese people. So I can understand why everybody tries to you know separate themselves, especially in Japan and you know a homogeneous you know countries where everybody's pretty much the same race. Yeah, and I think that's what we try to do over here. We just want to. You know, make leave our mark on this planet, or just be seen or be noticed, just to be validated. So many people, some people just want to be validated just for a minute to show that they're alive. Yeah, and that's what some people need to survive. And it's it's kind of sad, and it's but it's you know I can kind of understand it to a certain degree that people just need to be noticed. Yeah, yeah, to know that they're just being knowledge, and you know, just it's so many people in this world, dude. Once you notice that you're just one person and just a whole big scheme of things and you just like one of a billion yeah when you find when some people finally like realize that it kind of fucks with people's minds it's like man what makes me different yeah yeah man so yeah i can kind of see why they would do it but ain't nothing wrong with ain't wrong, nothing wrong with just being a man and just you know because that's 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 always coming to a point where that's rare yeah <laughs> you know yeah everybody switching sides <laughs> you know? everybody everybody jumping that fence that Caitlyn Jenner thing. Yeah, yeah. man. Yeah, that joke's, that joke's crazy. But, you know, family got caught. That joke out years ago, though. <laughs> yeah, you remember that joke? He was like, uh, listen for Caitlyn Jenner. And, like, and then, like, he was dancing for the Navy because they were about to go to war. Yeah. And they got like, woo! And they were, like, hitting their heads with a hammer, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that Looney Tunes thing. That shit was funny, but... Yeah, man. I think... I don't know. They're trying to... I don't know. They try to demasculate as many men as possible, and people that go for the okie doke, man, they'll they'll fall for it, dude. It's nothing wrong with being who you are. Yeah. So we're not trying to talk down. If you want to be different, if you want to, if you want to be that that sensitive male, you know, you can still be manly while being sensitive, but not to yeah. you know, not, not to the, the point where people yeah. like uh, judging your character. Or, yeah. You know, or wondering, you know, because I mean, at the end of the day, no one cares. But you I should know, hope. It's it's nice to be around, you know, like minded people. And, you know, it's kinda hard to do that when, you know, you know, everybody is, you know, I, I guess not on the same page mentally. Yeah, mentally as you, yeah, or or they just don't want to step on toes. Yeah. Or they want everybody to be happy, not knowing that you can't please everybody to begin with. Yeah. So that's something that you just need to just let go, you know, in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. So you de- you definitely you definitely just don't need to worry about that at all, man. Don't ever worry about stepping on people's toes and not being who you are. Yeah. You know I don't. So. I know. Yeah, dude. Yeah, you always been that person that say something there, like you like drop a pin in the room. <laughs> <laughs> I like say something there, like and still come back and say something afterwards, and then like they they be like, "Were he just saying that?" Like and then like you can just you hear like. <laughs> I forgot what comedian said. It's like you can hear like a mouse piss on cotton. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like you don't care. Like man, that's how, that's how you have to be. It's not not to a point where you be an asshole, but not to a point where you're gonna you know change who you are. Exactly. And, you know, just be who you know, just be be who you are, man. And and don't worry about what people want to think. If somebody today, you know, was out with your friends and you said something that went against the grain, but you stood by it, don't come up the next day and be like, hey man, you know what? I shouldn't have said that. Let me go ahead and take back what I said, but you truly believe it. Yeah. Don't don't do that, man. Stand by your guns. Unless it was so it was so disrespectful. They were you know, apologize for that. But if it's for if it's something that you truly believe in and weren't disrespectful towards the group, then don't apologize, man. Stand by being a man. Yeah, stand on stand on what you say. Stand on man, stand on your own too, man. Ten toes down with that shit, man. Stop this bullshit. That bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Stop this worrying about what everybody else is going to think and how can I please the, the women, man, and all this other shit, man. Because I remember I was out, man. I went to the, I remember I went out to the, I said, I said this, just, yeah, I said this just like a couple episodes ago. I, I know I was getting to talk about what the, uh, to the mall and I saw a whole bunch of kids had their hairdo like, like Odell Beckham Jr. And I was like, Jesus yeah. Christ, like, what the men in the house, man? Ain't no way in hell my kid had that shit in their head. <laughs> you know, you either, you, the, the first you get is a fade with a line in it. You get you a line. 
It ain't gonna be no crazy lines either. It's gonna be like one little slant that's like five inches long. It ain't gonna be <laughs> Yeah, you know I mean, you ain't getting that shit, you know, and then being my child, your head gonna go that far anyway. So, <laughs> so good luck with that shit. <laughs> uh, you gotta do the short end of the stick on the uh with the hair part. Yeah. And you fucked on that. <laughs> uh, the best you can get is do some cam some Cam Newton shit to get you a fade. <laughs> shit. Mm, come with that with that crap. <laughs> that shit pissed me all these kids got their little that frost top. I'm like, man, come on, man. What the shit? Like, all these kids just want to... Nah, I can kind of understand it, man. You want to do what's hip. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you want to do what's hip, and you want to, you know, what the girl's like, and you try to get, you know, I'm like Odell Beckham Jr., you know, and I put put out, put out your Germanimals, and, you know, let's, <laughs> <laughs> let's have some fun. But it's the same thing with females. If, you know... Just like with the like the fake asses, I'm glad that junk kind of getting out of style. But that junk was like running, that junk running rampant about like five years ago, man. It was just like it yeah. was rampant. Like I mean, hoes were dying for that shit. They were dying for fake asses, dude. Girls are still doing that though. Some, some in one way or another. Yep, they got some so, pads or something. Well, now they they going all out. Yeah. Going different countries. Yeah, so in surgery. Yes. Speaking of Odell Beckham Jr., man, like. Is it- <laughs> Like real quick, is it me or does like he does some like some suspect things every time I see him? Yeah, dog, that hot tub thing was was, was kind of suspect. But I think but I think I, know what you're doing. Yeah, I I mean they were generally having fun because you know he's in the team facility, so yeah. But you know, I, I'm just glad he was there and not at his house. Yeah, man, but, but still, like, why are you seeing a sexual healing? Inside hot tub full of men. Hot tub full of men. <laughs> no, I, I I'll never understand it. <laughs> I don't understand it. <laughs> like, oh, the better came with us, but like, hey man, y'all want to hang out? But like, all right, man, we'll be hanging out first of all. Number one, number one, number one, uh, number one. Are we going to the? Are we going to the club with a whole bunch of other people gonna be around, or is it gonna be at your house? Cause if it's gonna be at your house, dog, I'm straight. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't taking that chance to be on. Social media, my first time being seen on social media, be like, man, EC from Blank Campus Podcast. Caught on with Odell Beckham Jr. and the suspect picture. I'm like, man, no, <laughs> I'm straight, no. <laughs> yeah. no. I couldn't do it, dude, but I think you know what he's doing, man. Because, like, right after the the video came out, he tweeted, talking about, I'm back at it. Saying pretty much, like, ha, 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 you know, jokes on y'all or whatever. So, I think, yeah. I think you know what he's doing, man. Yeah. He probably is, man, but, you know, the, you know, you know, the case of, you know, the moral of the story is, man, men, and there's it, nothing, nothing wrong with being a man, and women, let your men be men. Yeah. Yeah, without it being disrespectful. As long as not disrespectful, man, let them be men. And that's all I got to say about it. What's up? Yeah, man, you got anything else, ST? I think that's going to do it, man. Yeah, man, but well, speaking of which, man, you know, we got Labor Day, you know, coming up. What you doing for Labor Day weekend? You know, typical nigga shit, you know, just oh, grilling your know, ribs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are you in dry, wet ribs? What kind of ribs is it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot. Yes, yeah, some potato salad. But uh, I'm going to the Georgia, North Carolina game this, this weekend. So I'll be doing okay. spending my uh, weekend with my sister. It's her uh, birthday. So I'll be taking some pictures of that of the game. I hope, it, I hope that'll be fun. You know, we got some good seats, so that should, that should be fun. You know, pretty much eating it. You know, eating the whole weekend. You know, but I, I definitely I work on Monday. You work on uh, next Monday? No, sir. Ah, you motherfucker! All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, damn, I'll be cussing while I'm at work. <laughs> Man, everybody, y'all stay blessed. Yes, sir. Uh, y'all definitely hit us up on Blank Canvas uh, at Blank Canvas ECST. Mm-hmm. On Twitter and on YouTube, you know, make sure you hit that, you know, follow, like, subscribe buttons, you know, rate us, tell us how we're doing, you know, we really appreciate it. Yep. We're always checking up on you, man. Thank you for all subscribers, man. We we love y'all. We see y'all, man. And, you know, definitely show us the love on the, on the back end, man. You know, we'll shout y'all out on the show, man. But if you got anything else, man, you know, y'all stay blessed. We love y'all. Yes, sir. Episode number 24. We gonna holler at y'all later. <laughs> Kobe! Yeah. Thank you for listening to Black Canvas Podcast. We'll see you next week. Ah.